dear. Assalamu alaikum. This is Nabila Rahman from United News of Bangladesh. And I'm very excited to bring some very interesting guests, both locally and globally, in our session today. We are planning on discussing some very interesting and collaborative initiative that a team of individuals spanning from Bangladesh to USA, from Harvard, Jahangir Nagar University, University of Dhaka, in collaboration with Bangladesh Center for the Study of Genocide and Justice, Liberation War Museum, with museum designers, social activists have been working on over the last six months to raise awareness about the Rohingya genocide and refugee crisis through the Thread Exhibit. So we are going to talk with the organizers and volunteers of the Thread Exhibit, which is a project that combines artwork and technology. Since it's in an online platform to bring light to the voices of the Rohingya people. So today we have with us our special guests from USA, Rachel Chuang, Andrew Armstrong, and from Bangladesh, we have Noreen Rahim, Arnav Tahmid Ornov, and Tabassum Islam Tamanna. And I would ask them to introduce themselves so that we can start our session. I recently graduated from the Harvard Graduate School of Education with a master's in international education policy. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm working in an ed tech company, so really um, supporting countries as they are rolling out their COVID response plans. Great. And right now I'm based in D.C. Okay, great. Nice to see you all. Um, so like Rachel said, I'm also um, studying at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. We're in the same program, International Education Policy. Um, and prior to coming to Harvard, I worked in education in Southern Thailand um, as a second language instructor. And now I work at the Interagency Network for Education and Emergencies, um, as well as I, with a fellow colleague, I'm working on a venture to support teachers in emergency contexts as well. Uh, my name is Tabassum Islam Damanna, and I'm a final year law student, uh, and I'm studying at Bangladesh University of Professionals. Uh, I'm also a volunteer at Liberation War Museum, and also a junior research uh, fellow at the museum as well. So thank you. Uh, my name is Ornob, and I'm uh, an undergrad at the uh, Department of Government and Politics uh, in Jahangir University. My name is Noreen, and uh, I am currently teaching at the Independent University of Bangladesh as an adjunct faculty. And apart from that, uh, I am uh, working as a coordinator to the Center for the Study of Genocide and Justice in Liberation War Museum. Thank you. The first question for um, anybody, Rachel, I think you're the team lead, if you can. Please share a little bit about the Thread Exhibit, the inspiration and purpose, and how did you come up with this initiative or idea? Yes, so since there's a number of us on the interview, I'll also help direct the question. And um, for the first part, I can speak about Thread. So it is an online museum exhibit that combines artwork and technology to bring light to the voices of the Rohingya. Um, as you'll see on the website, it revolves around several pieces of artwork created by Rohingya living in Cox's Bazaar. And our objective for the website is really to build an international community that can support the Rohingya in their journey to achieving justice. And so I think this project comes with a lot of humility in knowing that we are not Rohingya. Um, and for Andrew and myself, we grew up in a Western context, but we are hoping to really come alongside them as partners in this work. And then in terms of how we came around the initiative, um, I can go ahead and turn it over to Noreen to talk a bit about the Liberation Museum um, because they are one of our big partners in this. And then after that, I'll turn it over to Andrew to talk more about our class at Harvard and how that fits into Thread. Okay, Noreen, over to you. The Liberation War Museum is basically a private museum, which started its journey in uh, 1996. Uh, apart from showing the exhibits uh, in separate galleries in the museum, uh, which are specifically related to the glorious Liberation War of Bangladesh against Pakistan back in 1971, the museum has uh, also uh, initiated different projects from time to time. And uh, this include uh, the oral history project uh, and also the outreach program for school going students. And uh, usually the museum is uh, promoting the genocide prevention and 
on to this idea uh, in 2014, the museum established its uh, Center for the Study of Genocide and Justice, uh, where we actually engaged the uh, young students of Bangladesh and also from abroad. Uh, we conduct courses and trainings uh, for the students uh, so that they could learn the ongoing conflicts and also the genocides that are going across the world. So uh, in this regard, actually, we also initiated some research projects back in August 2017 when the Rohingya, a huge number of Rohingyas were being persecuted and coming across to the border of Bangladesh. Then uh, the center itself decided that uh, we should initiate a research project uh, through which we could document the mass atrocities uh, which were committed against the Rohingyas in Myanmar and also collecting the testimonies of the survivors who came into the border of Bangladesh and also let the world know what is exactly happening on the other side of the border. So this is how actually the museum and the center uh, are still involved in this process and uh, are connected with the Rohingya communities who are uh, currently living in the makeshift camps of Fox's Bazaar. So yeah, this is uh, all about the work uh, of the Liberation War Museum and its center. So what led you to take up the project to specifically focus on the Rohingyas? Museum usually uh, arranges international conferences on genocide and justice. So last year in November, when we arranged the sixth international conference, uh, then we met one of our panelists, uh, Professor John Hubbleways, uh, and uh, he actually suggested us to uh, engage in a very fruitful manner so that the uh, world at large could see what is happening and what we are already documenting. So in this regard, uh, basically, uh, and also in uh, sixth international conference, we had a, a exhibition on uh, quilt. It's a, it's a joint venture, basically. It's, it's between the Liberation War Museum and Asia Justice and Rights. So uh, we arranged a book launch and also a five day uh, exhibition in the Liberation War uh, Museum premises, where uh, we showed uh, the quilt project, uh, which is basically a project uh, with the engaged with the Rohingya women who are currently staying in the uh, makeshift camps. So through sewing uh, in a piece of cloth, they try to express their own narratives, their hopes and sorrows, both good and bad, and what they have struggled so far. So once we have engaged these uh, women through this quilt, a, a big, large quilt, through this, all this uh, piece of clothes became a, we are transformed as a very, very big quilt. So uh, once we launched this exhibition, it got very good appreciation from uh, all the panelists and organizers. Uh, so then uh, Professor John Hubble actually suggested that, why don't we do something uh, more on this? And then uh, through him, we got connected to Rattel. And uh, this is how actually we thought that we should uh, dive into this uh, different type of project, which is also for the same cause. So um, then she shared uh, this idea uh, with us and we just uh, suddenly uh, we decided that we should get into this project. So yeah, this is how the museum got collaborated with this project. Great. How are you sourcing the artwork craft of the Rohingya scene in the website? For the artwork itself, it is kindly provided by IUCN or International Union for Conservation of Nature, Bangladesh. And it was developed previously as part of a biodiversity conflict mitigation project through a UNHCR and IUCN partnership. And so on the landing page of the website, you'll see some arts and crafts created by Rohingya living in Cox's Bazaar. And then on a separate page, there's also um, a page called The Elephant in the Room, mm -hmm. which reflects IUCN's work to raise awareness about an elephant habitat that's near one of the camps in Cox's Bazaar. Mm -hmm. And the artist, he made a giant elephant structure, which we show pictures of on the website. And he also writes a very interesting reflection on the struggles of the stateless, both from the perspective of the elephants and also from the perspectives of the Rohingya. So I thought that was really interesting and wanted to showcase it on the website. Great. And uh, to Andrew now, regarding the website content and the exhibit that's happening, 
online, the platform. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, how, how the whole thing is coming together? Sure. Um, so as part of, as Rachel said, this, the content was developed kind of um, parallel to a course that we took at Harvard Education in Armed Conflict uh, with Sarah Dryden Peterson, who does quite a bit of work with refugee communities across the globe. And the, the main effort of this project is to craft a narrative around the educational experience of someone who's grown up in conflict or displacement settings. Mm -hmm. um, and part of this project is an education analysis, a conflict analysis, so really taking an in-depth look at the political educational sides of a conflict and how it's affected that person. So that's where a lot of the content for this website is developed. Um, and then originally we intended to interview someone in Cox's Bazaar. We had a, a partner um, who was running his own informal learning center there, but obviously due to COVID and kind of the restrictions that have now been put in place, we um, had to pivot and ended up interviewing a really, really knowledgeable person who works really closely with the Rohingya in Malaysia. So based on that, we were sort of able to identify this theme of the Rohingya as a global diaspora that exist in pockets, not only in Southeast Asia and South Asia, but across the globe and really identifying that while a lot of the international focus is rightly so on Cox's Bazaar, there's also pockets of Rohingya that exist all over the globe. And so we've kind of crafted this narrative to try to ele elevate the voices of Rohingya, not just in Cox's Bazaar, but all over the world as well. Very good. So the next question is for Orno Ben Tabassum. I, I know you guys are media volunteers uh, for the Thread Exhibit, and anything that you can share about your experience and for our Bangladeshi and global audience, for them actually to go into the site and what can they, what, what can, can they get out of it? If you can share your experience and your thought process on the Thread Exhibit for the Bangladeshi and global audience viewers so we can get them more on board. So we have received almost a thousand page views as of last week uh, from users all around the world, uh, mm -hmm. which includes Bangladesh, US, China, India, Thailand, Germany, United Kingdom, and so on and so forth. And we hope to continue publicizing the uh, exhibit, especially to empower the youth uh, to be more involved in the cause and uh, to build momentum and reach uh, more people. We are working globally as a team. Uh, uh, for example, on the US side, we plan to publish an op-ed uh, in a major newspaper uh, to publicize, it, publicize across uh, their networks and uh, also at their universities. Uh, basically, uh, if, to me, this, this project is uh, very special. The, the issues of just national uh, crimes against humanity, forced displacements of targeted population, etc., uh, through the winter school, which was organized uh, by the Liberation War Museum's uh, Center for the Study of Genocide and Justice uh, earlier this year. And uh, through this, uh, from this experience, I've realized that you can't possibly uh, tackle the issue, uh, these kind of issues, only from the legal juridical perspective. It concerns the international politics, history, anthropology, and of course, uh, human behavior. Uh, the Thread Exhibit Project particularly holds a special place for me because it is a more uh, structured uh, cyberspatial attempt to address uh, the similar kind of human agony and destruction that we Bang Bengalis had faced uh, as a nation back in 1971. Um, absurdly, the history of violence just keeps repeating, and this destructive and dehumanizing uh, iteration of history needs to stop. Uh, and I think uh, as the older generation slips into a kind of uh, amnesia or forgetfulness, it is the young people like us who need to internalize and address the horror that this particular aspect of history can cause. And we do see that it is possible through youth activism. Uh, we've seen its impact in education and climate change, and we are, are seeing its, critical, uh, it, its impact in critical issues such as awareness uh, and establishment of global justice, like, just like this project. Uh, so that's, that's why I'm really excited and hopeful about the third project. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, very well said. Very inspired to hear you say these things. And uh, I hope our audience will go check out uh, threadexhibit.com, www.threadexhibit.com. So Tabasum, on to you, the same question, your thoughts, your feelings, how do we engage the youths, the audience, so they can come 
to the thread platform and get to see the exhibit. Thank you again. So I would definitely go to the answer of Anafs, but uh, what I'd like to add is that we know that thread exhibit is an online museum exhibit. So we young people, we, we are almost on the social media almost half of our days. So uh, I guess this is the platform which uh, you, uh, the young generation would like to uh, go through and they would engage themselves more into the online platform than of any kind of leaflets or any kind of seminar. And we are also, you know, uh, in Bangladesh, we have eight university students who are working as online media volunteers. So they are spreading the news in their own ways. So say, for example, uh, in my case, I made this artwork by myself and then I made this poster and then I shared my artwork with my own words saying that, uh, okay, this is the background be uh, behind this uh, thread exhibit and you can also share your artworks or any form of arts it could be any audio files or any kind of photography or any kind of thing so we are basically uh, calling all the people so that they can actually visit the website to go through more that what is actually this thing about and they can get that clear idea and definitely they would invest in uh, their uh, they would invest their thoughts in our thread exhibit project so this is my idea of this Thanks. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Absolutely. We are all in social media. Just with last comments, anybody, what do you really want to achieve with this exhibit? How long is this online exhibit going to run? Any last comments before we end this show? The timeline. So we're looking at least to have the exhibit up to the end of the year. And um, as Anaf said, that we are attempting to publish our op-ed across you know, news outlets in the U.S. and kind of really just disseminate the narrative that we've crafted through Thread and through this project didn't get it in front of as many people as possible. Um, so that's what we're currently working on at the moment. Right, and I think with uh, COVID-19, it's perfect to have an online yeah. platform because I don't think anybody is going to be actually going to these galleries. And so I think it's the perfect timing for also to show at the end of the year, I think is a good year. Maybe you can stretch it out because we don't think COVID-19 is going anywhere. So <laughs> exactly. That whole thing kind of the collaboration and the time, time, the timing of this thread exhibit. So thank you so much for your time. We are basically globally from Bangladesh, from DC, from USA, and uh, we really appreciate the work that you're doing and the awareness that you're raising with the thread exhibit. Art has the power to remember the past, to build connections across time and space and contribute to the ongoing fight for justice in our communities and art can also heal. So hence, hence urging all our viewers, both locally and globally, to go check out the Thread Exhibit at thethreadexhibit.com. And it's going to be here for the end of the year. And I just hope everybody enjoys it. And thank you so much to our guests for being here. Thank you.